Hello, you're watching Telecom TV's Open RAN Summit. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. The RAN Intelligent Controller, or RIC, will be at the heart of any significant Open RAN deployment. It's the operating system running multiple applications that underpins the Open RAN promise. But how should network operators think about the deployment and use of both the near real-time RIC and the non-real-time RIC with their respective XAPs and RAPs? Well, joining me now to explain more is Luthia Di Miguel Albertos, who is Senior Open RAN Manager with Vodafone. Luthia, very good to meet you and thanks for taking part in our program today. Can I ask you first, why is the RAN Intelligent Controller, the RIC, so important to Open RAN? Right now, in the traditional legacy networks, uh, the, the, the radio resource management or the optimizations are dominated by few players, which proprietary solutions, which directly impact on innovation and competitiveness. On the other hand, we have RIC. RIC uh, will allow to provide to the run networks the openness to enable a wide multi-vendor or ecosystem of applications that will implement basic and novel operations, but also a very wide industry disruptive cases, uh, including business to business user case. RIC also provides analytics and AM IAML capabilities that are key to enable an autonomous network. At the end, RIC democratizes the run to third party applications, building a real app or run app marketplace. We want it to be the Google Marketplace. We talk about the RIC, but really there are two RICs. There's the near real-time RIC and the non-real-time RIC. So what's the difference between the two? The main obvious difference from the non-real-time RIC and the near um, real-time RIC is the architectural. Meanwhile, the non-RT RIC is centralized, the near RT RIC is distributed. So they have different views from the whole network or the cluster uh, or a cluster, a number, a reduced number of nodes. And in details, we can difference on time granularity. Uh, meanwhile, the near Arturic uh, is, uh, this, they have a distributed location. So uh, they go for a cluster view and they only can add in this uh, in these uh, nodes. However, it's possible to give some user cases uh, with little time. So they are moving from 10 milliseconds to one second, hosting closed loop user cases. Meanwhile, the non rt rig go for typical user cases with more than one second. Uh, another difference is the applicability scope. Uh, meanwhile, the non-real-time RIC uh, go for, they see all the whole network, so you can add via O1 interface to all the nodes of the network. The near the RIC, they only add to a cluster level, to a reduced number of nodes. Also, if you see in the in artificial intelligence applicability, the AM ML applications require more comput computational um, resources in the non RT rig due to the amount of data. Meanwhile, the near RT rig look for for little delay. 
You spoke about the desire to create a marketplace here. So how far advanced is the RIC ecosystem in terms of its development? Uh, the RIC ecosystem has evolved enormous in the last couple of years. Uh, it's incredible the number of play, the, the, the growth in the number of players in applications or platforms. It's the truth that the standards are not so mature, impacting directly that you are not able to scalable to commercial deployments yet. Anyway, Vodafone is fully supported to improve this standardization in the Orange Alliance, contributed to the different working groups uh, to define these open interfaces. From the point of view uh, of Vodafone, and even this is the reason of this interview, is very motivated uh, to see that the RIC is becoming a global trend where more and more players wanted to participate and to create user cases, applications, platforms. What's your advice to operators? What should they look for when sourcing RIC platforms? What are the key differentiators? I think, um, main, I think firstly, we have to go for the basic, the, the standardization and the collaboration uh, to fully support the open interface between the radio, the UCU, and um, the RIC are, are basic. Even the, co the coordination to move functions from one part to another. So open interfaces uh, is the key. Uh, and however, the end, at the end is Vodafone expect that the key differentiators will come for applications. Uh, X apps, web apps, uh, that uh, before I didn't explain, they are the applications deployed in the anti rig, in the non real time rig, and in the near real time, respectively, uh, in the RAP rig platform selected by operators. Uh, and this is, I think, the key differentiation. A lot of applications develop, developed for different vendors, partners, uh, operators uh, who are acting for different uh, scenarios, but they can act in the same user case. So we are removing the potential locking that one user case or one optimization only can be done by one player. So differentiation is really going to come from the apps. So should network operators therefore seek to source their X apps and R apps from their RIC vendors? From our point of view, and of course everybody can have an idea, is that the RIC framework uh, gives us the possibility to have different applications sourced for different companies. So uh, it's not required uh, that the application is done for the same RIC platform. The RIC platform gives you the environment with open interfaces. Uh, you can connect it all the vendors, all the, I think, players that they wanted to include it an, uh, an application. For I think the idea is, uh, for us, is that the RIC democratize so everybody can be connected to the RIC platform. Practically though, in reality, how easy is it going to be to add in or swap out X apps or R apps to commercial RIC deployments? The expectation is that both R apps or S apps will run as a microservices, a communi a communicating with the near or the non RT RIC. Uh, so through open APIs or dedicated SDKs. So it should be quite straightforward after any standardiz after the standardization. So it has to be similar that we have now in any marketplace. Well, it's certainly a very exciting part of the mobile industry at the moment. Luthia, we must leave it there for now. Thank you for joining us today and sharing your insights on the development of the RIC. 
If you're watching this during our Open RAN Summit, then please do send us your questions and we'll try and answer them in our live after show programme later today. For now though, thank you for watching and goodbye.